Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to this new 3D Natives webinar. I'm Carlotta, who will be moderating this webinar, and I'm joined uh, by our two speakers, Romain Dubreuil from uh, GF Machining Solutions uh, and Uwe Wolfarth from uh, Arnold Group. Uh, as you know, today we're going to be talking about Metal AM for industrial applications and uh, more specifically how uh, you can identify uh, good opportunities uh, when you are interested in integrating this technology in your company. So as you know, with these uh, 3D Natives webinar, we always start with a short poll to give attendees the time to, first of all, connect to the webinar and also to learn a bit more uh, about uh, why you're attending and why you're interested in this topic. Um, so I'm just going to bring up the questions on the screen straight away so that we can um, gather your answers. Um, so you should be able to see them and it should be very straightforward to answer. It's just uh, clicking on uh, the one of the multiple choice uh, answers that is on the screen. So for today's webinar, we have four short questions. The first one being, in which industrial segment are you the most active? Uh, the second one being, for which application are you interested in Metal AM? The third one, what do you identify as the biggest hurdle to investment in Metal AM? And finally, have you already invested or do you plan to invest in metal additive manufacturing? So I'll let everyone um, answer in the next minute or so as people are joining us. Um, I can already see that some people don't have any sound. If that's the case, um, just make sure you are using uh, Google Chrome to attend this webinar because sometimes we have had technical issues in the past but it's uh, usually a matter of the browser so if you can't hear us just put in the chat section if that's the case but if you switch to google chrome it should be um working fine okay so i'm just going to leave these questions uh for a minute or so for anyone who's just joined uh, we are starting our webinar uh, with uh, GF Machining Solutions and uh, Arnold in just a, a second, but we have a short poll just to gather some information on the audience um, and to know a bit more um, about why you're interested in this topic today. So we have about 50% of people who have voted. So I'm just gonna leave it on for 30 more seconds and then we will get started. <clears throat> and if you could just put in the chat section for anyone who's just joined, if you can hear us fine, that would be very useful. Um, and I'll share the results uh, pretty soon of the survey. We have about 60% of attendees who've answered. So it's pretty straightforward. So if you could just uh, answer some of the poll questions, it would be really useful and great for our speakers. Okay, I'm gonna be ending the vote and sharing the answers very briefly. So as you can see, um, it looks like the most uh, active segment is uh, other, <laughs> but that it's a pretty even distribution otherwise. Um, for which application are you interested in Metal AM? Uh, we have a serial production of parts and uh we then have what do you identify as the biggest hurdle to investment in metal am um unidentified return on investment um 
And then finally, have you already invested or do you plan to invest in Metal AM? Um, yes, being uh, the majority, but pretty close with no. Okay, let's uh, get started on today's uh, subject. So as you know, we're gonna be speaking about Metal AM uh, for industrial applications and uh, essentially when it makes when does it make sense to adopt or to integrate Metal AM? Um, today, I mean, if you're interested in additive or if you've used additive before, you know the main benefits of this technology, uh, in particular, uh, the geometric complexity that is greater than with uh, subtractive methods, the increased performance and reduced mass and lower costs on some applications. Um, that being said, uh, it's still a relatively young technology. So especially Metal AM um, that emerged in the 1990s, it's not always completely understood. So even though it really does bring benefits, many companies and many uh, businesses that are interested in uh, bringing this technology in their manufacturing process are not exactly aware of how to benefit from it. So. That being said, the market is growing uh, and we've seen uh, more and more manufacturers uh, coming up with solutions of uh, metal additive manufacturing. Actually, this uh, study that you have uh, on the screen is um, from Technavio that uh, predicts that the market growth will accelerate at a compound annual growth rate of over, of over 14% from uh, 2020 to 2024. Uh, this is before the COVID-19 uh, global health pandemic, just to keep in mind. But uh, the general trend is that Metal AM uh, is growing and uh, will be growing for the next uh, years. I've noticed we've lost one of the speakers. Uh, I'm not sure exactly, but I will try to bring him back on in just a second. Um, so on the market, there are different um, families of uh, metal AM technologies. We have uh, directed energy deposition, electron beam melting, nanoparticle jetting, and uh, laser powder bed fusion, which is the one we'll be focusing on today, which is important to mention. Um, laser powder bed fusion, as its name suggests, uh, we will be looking at powders and uh, laser fusing them to create a part layer by layer. Um, in general, there has been, and this goes hand in hand with uh, the market growth I was just mentioning, there has been a shift from prototyping to production within the whole additive manufacturing industry, but of course for metal as well. And this has been uh, allowed also by the progress made in the different steps around manufacturing, not just the technology. So in design software, uh, material compatibility and handling, post-processing steps, um, all of this for industries uh, in aerospace, medical and automotive. Uh, so this is where GF Machining Solutions comes in and why we have them as a speaker and as an expert uh, on metal and metal additive manufacturing as they have developed and optimized the metal AM workflow to support each user and uh, Homer will be giving you uh, more details in just a second, but it's uh, really to identify where uh, the, the main recommendations when you're looking at integrating this technology uh, can be beneficial. So the agenda for today, uh, as I was uh, telling you, we will be looking at briefly the current status of uh, metal additive manufacturing and uh, the key factors to consider when you're integrating it in a manufacturing process for your company. And then we will be looking at two different case studies, one with uh, Uwe Wolfarth from the Arnold Group. And then finally, we will have, uh, as usual, our Q&A uh, session of about 10 minutes. So throughout the webinar, you can send your questions on the chat section and uh, we will be answering them at the end. So make sure to share everything on the chat that you have at the right uh, of your screen. Now for today, I'll just be briefly 
introducing our speakers, but they will tell you um, more about themselves, of course. So as I was saying, we have uh, Romain Dubreuil, uh, Product Line Manager for GF Machining Solutions for four years. Um, and that He joined as an AM engineer, and he has been leading a team of additive application engineers, including responsibilities for business development. And prior to GF Machining Solutions, he was a production engineer manager for injection molding where he also led production teams uh, in product development. And uh, our second speaker, Uwe Wolfarth, is Senior Director of Research and Development at Arnold Unform Technique. Um, by th so this company, by combining sophisticated fastening technology with intelligent services, has become one of the world's leading manufacturers and development partners of high quality fastening elements and cord forging press parts. So it'll be interesting uh, to get his point of view and uh, for the case study that we have coming up. And then finally myself, Carlotta, I'm Carlotta, and I'll be moderating this webinar. I am the editor-in-chief for the English market of 3D Natives, which is one of the uh, leading online magazines about 3D printing, uh, where we cover the latest developments, the news around this technology, uh, and we also offer different uh, tools, uh, decision-making tools about additive. And we have, uh, as you know, if you followed these uh, webinars, a webinar every month on a different uh, topic, on a different technology with different users of, uh, of uh, additive. So now I'll hand it over to Romain to tell us more about GF and uh, some of the tips to integrating Metal AM. Thank you, Carlotta. So before we go into the details of the subject of today, I would like to make a very short introduction of GF Machining Solutions for those who do not yet know the company. Uh, so GF Machining Solutions is a Swiss company division of GF, and which is a leader in, and a leader in the manufacturing and sales of machine tools. Uh, GF Machining Solutions employs over 3,000 employees worldwide with a turnover of uh, 972 million Swiss francs in 2019. So GF Machining Solutions has a quite unique uh, technology portfolio and provides solutions to customers in all market segments with products in milling, EDM, laser texturing, additive manufacturing, which is the subject of today, uh, micro machining, spindles, tooling and automation, and finally dig digital transformation. In the field of AM, uh, GF together with 3D Systems aims to offer the complete solutions for the production of AM parts. The AM offering is built around the core printer technology with the DMP printers for which a robust database of materials has been developed. The printers are complemented with high-end software in 3D Expert providing an end-to-end -end AM features for from uh, the 3D model to the post-machine parts. GF, as said by Carlotta, also strongly focuses on the integration of the technology into production with seamless links to post-machining operations, making use of GF tooling and automation, as well as dedicated post-processing machines. Finally, we can support you with a global team of application experts that can guide customers in the adoption of additive. Moving on now to the topic of today, uh, the presentation will be focused on how to identify good opportunities to apply additive specifically to general industry applications. Uh, we hope to provide you some guidelines as how you can best identify opportunities and then switch to two case studies demonstrating what we, would, we believe to be good examples uh, within particular uh, testimonial from Arnold Unform Technique as to their experience of the adoption of the technology. To start off with an observation, so additive manufacturing has had a very rapid growth and extensive media co covering in the last year for applications in segments such as aerospace, medical and motorsport. You may, may well have seen uh, many of the examples of these types of applications. Arguments in favor of these technologies and trends in these segments are very often quite easy to identify. Uh, and uh, for, for example, with the light weighting objectives and topology optimized parts in aerospace, uh, Medical has as well been able to adopt additive uh, with uh, the possibility to co produce uh, complex lattice structures that promote OCO integration. 
although it would be oversimplistic to state that integrating additive is simple in these segments, uh, there is a common knowledge and understanding to the reasons why to adopt the technology. So in contrast with these uh, super hypes and trends, uh, integrating AM in, into more general industrial applications is not as straightforward. I think there are a couple of reasons that we could put forward as to why this is the fact. So the first one is that there is really a huge ar array and diversity of potential parts, and there is no one application or feature that fits all. The question is where to start and what, what where to focus on. There is also often a lack of knowledge and understanding to identify where to find the highest potential uh, and also the advantages of AM. And finally, unlike in uh, uh, aerospace or medical, as we said, uh, it often requires a real analysis in order to demonstrate the return on investment that can be achieved through the use of AM. In addition, uh, I think companies are often reluctant to engage in the use of additive uh, and com commonly refer to as additive as a time-consuming pro process with poor surface quality and limited accuracy, as well as few materials. This often leads to a disqualification of the of AM before there is a real analysis. Uh, therefore, in order to ben benefit from the technology, uh, the first step, uh, it is, if, as a first step, it is important to grasp really what are the advantages for AM in industry. So, of course, summarizing all the potential benefits of laser powder bed fusion is not something that can be condensed in one slide. However, a few uh, advantages we have industry, uh, uh, identified for industrial applications are often linked to the possibility to consolidate assemblies. So simply put, this is going from an assembly of multiple parts uh, to a single part. And I think this will be uh, very well demonstrated by Arnold und Pontechnik. Uh, the potential to reduce the lead time, uh, machines can be set up to produce very diverse parts from one day to the next. The ability to strong, strongly increase the performance of produced parts, um, I think the typical and simple example to illustrate this for many industries are heat exchangers that can be con customized and optimized by additive manufacturing. Digital and unmanned production with the ability to um, uh, apply, uh, go very, very quickly from a 3D model to a printed part. And finally, operating the fact that operating AM machines requires a low level of expertise. Uh, operators for the machines can be trained, trained within a couple of days. Uh, we speak here, of course, of running of the machine, which is slightly different to the, the design side of uh, aspect of additive manufacturing. So if we go now into a few recommendations that we would have for you. Um, so first of all, do not copy and paste. What do we mean by this? So most of, often, if you try to replace one for one an additive part, uh, by, uh, milled or turned part, sorry, by an additive part, it will only make it more expensive and less accurate. Therefore, there must be a will to reevaluate and challenge the established pro process. It is insufficient from our point of view to only look at manu uh, additive manufacturing as uh, only a manufacturing operation, as highest added value will, resist, uh, will result from a holistic approach. The question to be asked rather than how to produce this geometry is what are the requirements of the assembly to, or the part or assembly. This is what we can in, uh, see in the example below um, with uh, on, on, the, on the far left, uh, the, the function to be fulfilled. So in this case, it is uh, three simple holes. The conventional approach, which was start from a blank and subtract material. And final, the, finally, the AM approach, which is only interesting uh, if you change the approach and look at it in a different way. Our second re uh, recommendation, and this is this is in the same uh, direction, let's say, uh, is to not com copy and paste in terms of materials. Um, so the idea is to find the AM material that best fix fits the application, rather than wanting to produce the part by AM by a material that may have been used historically. 
what is the reason for this? The reason is quite simple. Many materials cannot be welded easily and are, de are therefore not AM friendly. In addition, even if you could work with uh, a material that could be suitable for AM, this material needs to be available in powder form. So we recommend to start with, let's say, the standard portfolio of materials which are readily available. A typical example to illustrate this are high carbon steels, which are very commonly used in manufacturing and in industry, um, but are very poor candidates to additive due to the high risk of cracking during the printing. Um, so here the idea is to use uh, alternative st steels that are optimized for AM and work best with AM. The third recommendation is um, to calculate and evaluate the overall value. Although there are many examples where AM reduces the manufacturing cost of the part, and this is of course uh, an added value, in many cases the added value will be found as elsewhere. So two, two examples to illustrate this concept. So on the, on the left-hand side here, you have an injection mold. An injection mold, the value is most often not in decreasing the price of the production of the, the mold insert, uh, but large savings can be found in the quality or, or cycle time during the injection pro process. Um, uh, in parallel, uh, for prototyping, the, the value will come from the ability to create multiple iterations within days of geometries which are very similar to the final part. It is therefore important to evaluate the value not only of the manufacturing operation and the cost of the part, but, in, in, but to take into account the overall value. And this is often a lot more difficult to evaluate. Our fourth recommendation would be uh, to scan your portfolio of parts and filter. So often areas where AM could be beneficial are not directly obvious and requires to really scan the portfolio of parts that you are producing in order to identify the, the best candidates. In general, a, a few key filters that can be used in order to identify best candidates. Um, so first of all, there should be a business case. So AM often solves a pain point. So in the example here of this uh, hydraulic manifold, we're going to uh, for, from a very complex place to, uh, part to, to machine with deep hole drilling, multiple operations into a very simple part that can be produced by additive. Second element uh, which is often uh, looked into is the quantity of parts that you will be producing. Very high series of parts, so we're talking here in millions, are uh, often not a very good fit for additive uh, as co conventional technologies will benefit a lot more from econo economies of scale. Best case, case scenarios are therefore in parts and produced in small to medium series or one-offs. And finally, the, the size must be compatible with AM uh, and fit AM machines. So keep in mind that, um, uh, first of all, the, the size that we can print is, is limited. And the second element is that uh, multiplying the dimensions by two uh, will multiply the volume of the part, so the physical volume of the part by, by, by four and production time by four. So this means that the cost will be much higher. Our fifth recommendation, uh, again, when you're scanning the portfolio is uh, and, and looking for the best candidates is, is to have a pluridisciplinary approach. So as previously mentioned, the benefits can be found in different areas. So it can be simplification of the manufacturing, finding uh, new functions and bringing new functions to the part. And a general overview is better found when including uh, multiple competencies. Um, in addition, when a good potential is found, uh, design, uh, design optimizations and uh, the additive part must incorporate downstream needs and limitations. Uh, it is absolutely of no point uh, to print a part which cannot be finished and, and uh, uh, finalized for, in the production process. Oops, sorry. So if we now shift into the, the cost calculation cost considerations, we'll, which will be very important in order to evaluate, okay, would, will this be interesting for you? Um, AM cost is very, very much driven by the machine depreciation cost. And we will come into this in a bit more detail. Um, if the design is AM friendly, so if you think about this upstream uh, in, the, in the genesis of the, of the part, uh, 
CAM programming related costs can be extremely low. So it can be a very, really a plug and play, play uh, solution. So if we go in a, a little more detail here and we dive a bit deeper in the costs, um, so of course these cost assumptions will depend on many fa factors and company accounting strategy. However, to give an, an overall view, um, if we look on the rest uh, on the left hand side, the hourly rate to run an, a machine is, as said, mainly driven by the depreciation cost of the machine. This is followed by the powder cost. So in particular industrial applications, this steels, for example, this will be a limited uh, cost. Of course, if you move to more exotic materials such as uh, titanium, etc., cetera, uh, costs can rapidly um, uh, increase. But for many uh, industrial applications, it will be steels. And so it is a, a relatively small fraction of the cost. And finally, the operator cost, uh, which due to the fact of, that the machines can run mostly unmanned, uh, will be relatively low. In addition, and here a bit of promotion for our, our machines, uh, the, the argon cost, so in, in particular on our DMP machines, can be an inert gas, can be really limited thanks to the vacuum concept. On the other hand side, if you look at the, the graph on the, on the right, uh, in addition to the hourly rate of the machine, and this we believe is very important, it's important to see that the printing operation process is only in itself a fraction of the cost. Um, so depending on the level of, of integration and design for additive manufacturing, uh, CAD and CAM preparation costs can be virtually inexistent or be quite heavily uh, on the contrary uh, when working on prototyping. Finally, uh, most uh, AM parts will require uh, most often some kind of post-processing which can re represent a high fraction of the, the total cost of the, the manufacturing of the part. So now if we shift into our first uh, case study. So uh, this uh, case study, um, so the idea here is, is to demonstrate what can be done uh, by using AM in a smart way. So the application at hand is a cutting tool holder. And those in the industry will know that there are two optimizations that are really ven very beneficial to the milling process. The first element is reducing the weight of the tool holder, uh, which in turn will re reduce the inertia that you have uh, during the, the cutting process. Uh, and this is in particular very interesting when in very rapid movement. So this is a, a goal, let's say, for, for tool holders is to reduce the weight. The second uh, optimization is uh, to optimize the, the, the lubrication. Uh, and here the idea is to bring coolant channels, which will di be directly uh, oriented towards the cutting zone, which improves the cutting process and which reduced, reduces the wear of the, the cutting inserts. So this is where AM offers, uh, uh, first of all, a business, uh, an, an interesting business case and allows to tackle both, the, both challenges by uh, lightweight design, so removing unnecessary uh, material. Um, as well as producing coolant channels that are aimed directly at the, the zone where the cutting is taking place. However, on this application, the story does not end there. Um, if you see here, the bottom section of this uh, geometry is really not interesting to produce by AM. There are several reasons to this. First of all, it's a very uh, simple geometry to be produced by, by uh, in this case, a turning operation. Uh, and in addition, it's very tricky to print, actually, <laughs> due to, to the high amount of support structures required in the overhanging zones. So here, the idea is to have an optimized process um, which makes use of a pre-machined substrate <coughs> onto which we will print the geometry. And this is correctly uh, located thanks to clever referencing uh, tools av available on the DMP uh, machine and software. So the idea here is that we have not only an optimized parts thanks to the additive functions uh, um, that uh, brought through, the, through the, the, the printing process, but or also a more efficient and cost-effective process achieved by really integrating AM into the process chain and al analyzing the process as a whole. So I think this, this case study uh, demonstrates the, the right example of a good opportunity uh, uh, where, where you can achieve uh, essentially a very well optimized part, including the downstream operation. So you're looking at the, the production not only as AM, but how can I optimize this uh, as a whole to, to, for the, the, the best possible, possible integration. 
So now we'll move to the second case study, which is uh, brought to us by Arnold uh, Umform Technique, um, which shows aims to demonstrate how, how they have uh, put uh, additive to use uh, inside of the company. Thanks a lot for the introduction and the uh, overloading. My name is Uwe Wolfert. I'm in charge of R&D at Arnold Umform Technik. I'm with the company now since uh, 12 years. And today I try to give you some information about uh, the Arnold Group and uh, the way which we had done to be today a producer of uh, 3D parts and also which additional benefits we found out uh, in the meantime. So Arnold is a company more than 120 years old, belong to the Wirth Group, and with uh, 1,300 employees, we are a mid-sized private-owned company. Our production is located where the automotive industry, which are our main customers, are located too. Today, we are known on the market and uh, on our customer side as a company which develop innovative fastening solutions. And uh, today, we are known as a production company which uses cold forging as their core process, which is a production method of mass production. And to tell you what means mass production, in our point of view, we produce per year 6 billion single parts. So this is nothing you bring in link directly with AM in the first time. Our overall strategic directions at the moment, uh, you can see on this slide in Product uh, speaking, it's mostly the e-mobility and the lightweight engineering, which develops a lot of new products at the moment and new projects within our R&D department. What are the main arguments for us if we decide to invest in such a technology? Remember, we are in mass production and first, there is no direct link into this technology. Our customers know us not only as a producer of fasteners, they also know us as a system supplier. So we develop not only the fastener itself, we also have the feeding systems, the process technology and the control technology to deliver a full automized system to them. And in the lightweight uh, discussion and in the lightweight developments we had seen in the last years, more and more multi-complex materials came in to the body invites. That means that not only steel or hardened steel, but also aluminum and composites are becoming more and more place in this body invite. And this means all the time, if you have a new material available, which can be used in the car industry, you need a joining technology. If you are not able to join it, you cannot use the material. And this brings power to us and uh, give us a lot of opportunities, but on the other side, also a lot of things to do at short notice since our customer expect to reduce lead time all the time. So this is one of the reasons that we decide to invest in AM to be able to produce parts for our machinery department, also spare parts at short notice, of course, but also, and this is the main reason to shorten the develop time for the systems. And now I can show you some first steps we have made. And as you've seen, the first word in the upper line is redesign. And as Roman already explained, redesign is always the second best idea, of course. And uh, 
On the other hand, I think most of the companies start that way. Uh, you need to get a feeling of what makes sense and what not. And uh, therefore, to investigate the existing parts and see what's happened there is not always a bad idea. And as you can see in this uh, simple example, we had a machined part out of five machine components. We had to manufacture eight internal threads using eight screws. We have the assembly time instead of now one single printed part, which under the bottom line costs less than 50% compared to the old design. You may remember this picture uh, from the former presentation. This is also a part for a feeding system we use for clinch studs. Such elements are feeded in a hose by air and uh, if they come into the press machine, you need to correct the direction in a 90 degree angle to reach the installation position. So the only real function this part have is to have a screw which can in the hose from this direction moving 90 degrees down here. So the only area which need to precise is this and this. And if you compare it with the machine part, you see that you need a lot of accuracy here just to be able to assemble the item which do not have real later on a function. And this make this part real expensive and this part real cheap. Even it looks more sophisticated in addition. But we also have learned a lot in the meantime and now we are able to create the first upfront 3D designed parts. And one example I have brought with me here it's also part of a feeding system and the fastener came here in a circular feeding channel, which you may not see so proper, but what's main interesting are these two brake elements here. A fastener blown in a hose by air is really fast and you need a certain point and you need a break where you can stop it in the right position. And if you think about conventional design, you need to produce two half shells here. You need two break elements, you need the bearing points and you need it to machine real precise to be able to assemble it later on. Today we print it as one single part including this movable brake um, parts here. And this is really an advantage technical wise, cost wise and lead time wise. Conventional produced, we need at least uh, six to eight weeks normally without any special efforts to have it on the desk. Now it's done within less than one week. So this is where we had uh, done the investment for and uh, nobody think up front that there may be a chance to produce fasteners since we all know fastener is a mass production and the AM does not make sense to produce on this mass of parts. Of course, that's right. But if you look in our development process, you see all the different steps you may know from your own business. And at one day, you need some prototypes. And also today, we have a uh, department where we have a so-called Fastener Express which today produce these samples on a conventional way in a separate department. 
And uh, there we are able to deliver mostly serial production parts within one to three weeks, let's say. This is always fast since a standard process, if you give us an order and we set up a standard process, normally we have a lead time of 12 to 16 weeks. So one to three weeks is not bad, but our customers, and uh, I think this is not only the automotive industry, every customer like it if you can do it faster. And so we have had a situation several times now where we really produce simple, let's call it simple fasteners. In this example here, you see some piercing nuts. We deliver just overnight. So if your customer have a problem and you can solve it, it's always not a bad situation for a supplier. So therefore, more and more, the reduction of lead time in terms of machine parts as well as fasteners is uh, very welcome in our organization and uh, give us a lot of opportunities in the future to serve our customers better than in the past. What we try to offer to everybody, so it's not only our existing customer portfolio, we know that uh, AM is a solution not only for the automotive industry, a lot of other industry can participate of, this, uh, of the benefits of this new technology. So we try to be a supplier for this technology and offer all necessary services around it beginning with the analysis and uh, also uh, the production, of course. We have all the needed machinery for optimal uh, reworking. We can do heat treatment, coating, uh, quality documentation, and all the other stuff you know, which is uh, standard in, a, in an automotive uh, supplier company. So that's from my side. I hope you get some impulses for your own business, what may be possible and what not, and uh, maybe we can answer later on some of your questions. Thank you so far. Okay, so I think uh, here as a first uh, short con conclusion of, the, of this thing section, so we, we, we truly hope that this presentation could give you some insight as to how you could best identify the opportunities uh, in your company. So not just by copying your current uh, process and replacing it by, by additive, but by really scanning your portfolio of parts, uh, thinking of the, the, the manufacturing process as a whole. Uh, and, and looking into where you can uh, find optimizations and integrate this really into your manufacturing process. No? Um, so I think uh, I see that there are quite some uh, interesting questions now, so we can maybe shift to the questions now. Yeah, we thank you first of all to both of you, um, Roma and Juve, it was very interesting. We're going to move to the questions uh, right now. So we have uh, about 15 minutes, which is plenty of time. Um, I actually wanted to ask you a que question, Roma, about, um, I mean, I'm, as you, was, you were mentioning, um, once uh, companies will get a better under understanding of when it's interesting to integrate uh, Metal AM, what sort of solutions are on the market? So for example, GF Machining Solutions, you've, de you've developed a whole workflow uh, to and integrate uh, Metal AM. Could you tell us uh, a little bit more about this uh, optimized workflow and what it consists of and how it works? Yeah, certainly. So uh, on the GF machining solution side, so, so, so as, it, as it is stated in the name, uh, GF offers uh, manufacturing solutions. Um, so in the case of uh, additive manufacturing, this means, of course, that we're offering the, the Metal AM hardware. Um, but we see this as uh, one of the steps that you will have uh, in a complete manufacturing chain. Uh, and we believe that in order to best uh, integrate additive manufacturing, you need to uh, combine this. Uh, so the first element, the first 
first thing that comes to mind is, is with the software. So with our partner, uh, 3D Systems, we are offering uh, the, the 3D Expert software, which is really a, a tool uh, that allows you go to go from the 3D model and the preparation that you need to do in, in AM, but you can also go all the way to the preparation of your post machining operations so all within the same uh, piece of, of software so that is one one aspect of, of how this can can be done a second a aspect is um, so we're offering uh, of course uh, conventional machines but we're uh, to uh, subtractive machines to to finish am parts uh, but we're al we are also are developing machines and offering machines uh, that are dedicated to the needs of, of am so we have uh, in our range of uh, edm machines for example one one dedicated machine which which is uh, the CUT AM500, which is a machine that is uh, uh, manufactured specifically to uh, address the needs of uh, uh, additive manufacturing and separate the parts from, from the build plate. So again, here the idea is to create um, an ecosystem in, in between the different uh, machining operations. Um, yeah, and uh, the, the reasons are obvious, it's to, to uh, decrease the cost and improve the, the efficiency. You know? And then the, the final element is that, uh, okay, all this does needs to come with, with competence. Uh, so uh, having the, the hardware that is uh, one step, having the, the software that is uh, another step. But uh, the, the addition that we aim to, to bring is, okay, uh, competence in, in additive manufacturing, of course. Uh, and this is, for example, what we did with the, to, to support uh, Arnold uh, with, their, with their adoption of the technology. Um, but also uh, the smart way of doing that in, in combination with other manufacturing processes. You know? So we have a very extensive knowledge of other manufacturing processes. Uh, so we can probably quite uh, quite easily determine, OK, where do we believe that it most makes sense to, to use additive? And there are a lot of applications uh, which are this way. But maybe in contrast a bit with, with the, the hype that there is around additive, uh, there are also a lot of applications where it does not make sense. No. And that is uh, probably where we can benefit from our, our uh, knowledge and our um, and our um, uh, yeah our, our background in, in industry in order to to support customers. Yep, I have many follow up questions. Uh, I guess one that I saw in the chat, and it's one that comes again and again. It is that relationship between subtractive and additive, and how important it's uh, it is to identify when is it better to go additive and when is it better to go subtractive? And we often get this question, is additive gonna take over and uh, you know get rid of some subtractive uh, conventional manufacturing methods? Yeah, so I think um, two, uh, two answers to this. Uh, so uh, there are certainly applications where additive will, will replace uh, previous subtractive machines. And for example, the, 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 the example uh, from Uwe is, is a good, is a good uh, example. This was previously a part that was machined from several different components and that has been replaced by one single component. Uh, however, uh, what is maybe not mentioned on, on this part is that in order to assemble this into the, the rest of the, 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 the assembly and the machine, uh, there are areas that need to be machined and post-machined where you need accuracy in the assembly. Uh, so it is on the one hand side a, a, a competition to, to additive, uh, or additive is a competition to subtractive, but on the other hand side, uh, you need them to work hand in hand hand in order to to um, uh, manufacture a, a complete component no. so it's probably a, a mix of the two two uh, elements okay uh, i'm gonna pick uh, some questions from the chat we had one uh, which was would you recommend using am for quite small this is quite specific but would you recommend using am for quite small injection modes to improve the the cooling and the to reduce the cycle times it's quite general quite I, I let me know if you can answer this yes yes no that that is um so certainly uh the here the i think the question was also on, on specifically some some um uh, berlin alloys so certainly mm -hmm. additive is a very good um uh, very good uh, um, solution in order to produce uh, conformal cooling uh, molds. And uh, here, I think this is a very good example as to um, what we mean by not 
not thinking of uh, replacing what is already existing. Existing, so uh, beryllium coppers and, and and coppers in general are are not easy to to print, um, and this is due to the fact that there's a very high reflectivity that the, the materials are very um, uh, are very reactive. Uh, so it means that they cannot be um, uh, processed easily in the in the AM machine. Um, so. Uh, what what we have seen in the past is uh, is that actually this is maybe not uh, a big limitation and we have for example a case study actually within the gf group uh, where um, there was an insert that was produced in these kinds of alloys um, which could not be produced in the same material in additive but by using the, the, the advantages of additive and uh, optimizing the design of the part by additive with the additive uh, materials that we, we, we have, uh, we were able to further uh, improve uh, the, the manufacturing of, the, of this part and the, and the process um, uh, to, to make uh, quite substantive uh, savings uh, during the, print, the, the injection process. Okay, great. I'm gonna ask a question to Uwe. Someone asked uh, you that you mentioned quality documentation and how do you ensure the dimensional accuracy of the parts? Uh, are 3D scanners involved uh, in this uh, process of checking the, the quality and the accuracy? As uh, always, if you do production, you need a uh, quality tool which is able to check the quality. Sometimes you can use real standard uh, measurements, but often since uh, 3D parts look uh, more sophisticated than, than uh, machine parts, uh, the 3D scanner is real a good option to uh, have both the geometry accuracy as well as uh, the dimension itself. Okay, and uh... Do you have any comparative analysis of the mechanical strengths of details made with the casting methods and with the AM methods to compare them? Uh, is the question if we compare the mechanical yes. performances? Yes, uh, this is what we do if we have uh, critical parts uh, that we compare both and in most cases we reach uh, more than 99.8 of the original values okay maybe to to complement uh, on 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 this uh, question relative to the the mechanical properties uh, relative to to castings so i think um, uh, in 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 many uh, in many examples actually additive can can prove can give better results than in castings so for, i think for example of uh, investment costing which is not something that we we discussed today uh, but uh, that can be a very uh, challenging process uh, to master in particular in order to avoid uh, porosity in, in certain zones, uh, and uh, actually by additive manufacturing, we can we can reach uh, properties which are and, and densities which are uh, higher than those that we could achieve by uh, by investment casting. So um, I think okay, it's a very wide uh, question, and there are a lot of different types of uh, casting processes. Uh, but maybe that provides a bit of insight as to as to what can be achieved by by additive. No? And this, I think, is also specific to laser powder bed fusion. This will maybe not be the case in all uh, metal additive uh, processes. Yeah, and talking about the technologies uh, more generally, I mean, here we're talking about laser powder bed fusion. I guess I, I will know your answer to this question, but what sort of machine brands do you recommend for metal AM? <laughs> So uh, naturally, we would uh, recommend uh, the machines uh, from 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 GF uh, and and 3D systems, um, and yeah, again, so here it is uh, the printers, of course, where we, I think we have a, a really a, a very interesting technology uh, with the the vacuum process and and for example tools. I did not uh, talk about this, but for example, the the tools for the referencing for the hybrid parts. Uh, these are all elements uh, which are integrated into our into our solutions and and really. Um, are aimed to to bring AM as a, as a solution on your shop floor, uh, and as one of the manufacturing steps uh, in the in the process of of creating a part which may go through many many different steps. Now, so there's a, a real uh, unique uh, knowledge and and technology that Jeff can offer in this in this regard. And I don't know if you've. Uh, uh 
picked any questions that you would like to to answer to in particular because there's some quite technical so i don't know if you've spotted anything uh, in particular otherwise I, I will continue asking a more general question but i i would just like to ask the two speakers if you there's anything you've seen you wanted to reply to during the, the webinar not specifically I have not read through all of them, to be honest. So uh, maybe you can okay. continue and I if, uh, can read through them okay. at the same time. So um, in terms of the ag agility of uh, Metal AM, I mean, additive manufacturing, we've seen, especially during the, the pandemic, that one of the cards it had to play was the agility and how quickly uh, you could manufacture parts when you didn't have access to, you know, suppliers, uh, whether in Asia, et cetera. So would you say that Metal AM is as agile uh, as additive manufacturing as a, as a family of technologies? Like what can we benefit from this aspect of the technology too? Is it important for manufacturers to consider? Um, so I, I think uh, you, you mentioned the fact that uh, the, of the the agility and and um, and how how easy it is to to produce parts. So I think one one element is is the the digital aspect of the technology. So this means that um, so okay, this this depends of course on on what series of manufacturing we're we're talking about. But for example, if you think about uh, milling, if you need to produce a single prototype in a location, uh, then typically this is done by uh, it will be a CAD programmer and, and, a, and an operator that, that will work hand in hand and really near the machine that they will be using in order to print this, in, in order to machine this part. Uh, the advantage of, of additive, uh, so if you have uh, a piece of hardware that is located, I don't know, thousands of kilometers away, uh, away uh, actually the, the, the preparation, as long as you're, you're working with the, the, the correct uh, software and in order to, to prepare this for this specific machine, this can be done very easily at a distance. You know? um, so in that sense, it, it, can, it can give a, a real agility in the in the manufacturing of, of parts and actually we we do this a lot uh, in in the case of, of benchmarking uh, within gf or and to to help customers we we don't have all materials in one single location uh, meaning that if a customer requires a sample part or something like this uh, uh, in a material that would not be available locally, mm -hmm. then it, it is actually produced in a different location, uh, but can be prepared uh, locally uh, depending on the, the customer's re requirements and, and requests. I see. And Uwe, did you have anything? I don't know if you wanted to add something. No, no. I think that's, that's all, yes. Yeah. Um, and in terms of, uh, I mean, this is also a big topic uh, with AM, it's uh, the certification of parts. And uh, how do you work uh, around this? Um, I don't know if you've had any experience uh, at Arnold or in general. I think Uwe, for the, for the automotive market, you can maybe answer that question and it really goes into your expertise now. Uh, to be honest, I do not really understand the question. Can you repeat it, please? Yeah, how do you work with uh, certifying the certification of parts for additive manufacturing? <clears throat> ah, okay, this is uh, something also our customers, of course, need to learn. So uh, it's a real difference if you have just an emblem, uh, which is nice to see or if you have a part which is uh, inside of a, a function which is maybe safety critical. So uh, there are totally different ways and efforts to be considered to uh, save this, this total process. And uh, this is something which we are have uh, now under development together with some partners in the automotive industry uh, but I think we are uh, yeah, maybe one or two years away from being able to deliver serial production in safety critical areas. This need to be established. And I'm not sure if all the, the technology is already in, in the right place, uh, which you need to control these parts. And uh, also for every part, I think you need to investigate if it is good enough uh, to check maybe every 10th or every 100th part 
or did you need a, a full inspection 100% if it is real safety critical? Oman, do you want to add something? Or? Yeah, I think maybe the, the, here there the, the, there are things that can be learned from the the, the um, let's say the the fields where adoption of AM has been a bit, was a bit uh, a bit um, is is a bit more advanced. So, for example, in 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 medical and in 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 uh, aerospace, there are now um, processes that are very well established in order to certify the the the, the manufacturing of of parts and additive. Um, so, for example, uh, in inside of the GF group actually in the GF costing solutions uh, side of, of our company we have uh, locations that are certified in for aerospace applications uh, and where uh, okay the the framework has really been um, uh, installed and and built up uh, same goes in in the se segment of, of uh, medical and I think that okay it's a, it's a question also of, of, of critical mass and adoption in the in the sector before it there all the standards can be put in place um, so uh, there have been uh, segments where this has been adopted uh, earlier, as I said, in aerospace and, and medical, for example. And as we move more into uh, other uh, domains of industry, uh, then certainly these will follow uh, step by step. But there is probably a lot that can be taken out of the, the framework that has already been established for these uh, segments where, it, where it's also very crit critical applications and it's not uh, uh, flying parts or, or implants are, are not something that is uh, to be taken lightly. Yeah, well, yeah of course that. To be added, sorry. Uh, sorry, to be added, uh, these are also areas where you have other cost structure. And exactly. Other so this is the, the challenge on that way. Yeah, and it's, uh, I guess, uh, the the difference also with additive, there is still a lot to, to be done and for a lot of industries to adopt it more. So I guess my last question to conclude uh, also this webinar um, is uh, if you wanted to share any next projects, how each company is positioning itself to in this uh, industry uh, and anything uh, more generally you wanted to share to conclude uh, this really interesting webinar. So I think uh, okay on the on the on the GF side, so we're, we're at the, at the, in the first years of, of uh, additive, and we really truly believe in the in the technology, and we tr truly believe that it will be uh, part of the future of, of additive manufacturing of manufacturing, sorry, in, in general. Um, however, we we truly believe that it it must be seen as uh, a tool inside of uh, a variety of different uh, technologies that can be used uh, for the manufacturing of. Of parts now, um, and from our point of view, the the um, the, the tool that it, you, you must um, uh, identify where the highest benefit is and and use the correct manufacturing process uh, to to achieve uh, the 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 goals now. Um, but yes, so I, I I'm sure that uh, maybe okay now there's a a, a bit less of a of a, of a, a, a growth inside of additive and we're at a, a, le a level where it has uh, consolidated uh, slightly but I, I truly believe that there is a lot of uh, uh, there are a lot of applications that are not exploited in in in, in, in particular in industrial applications um, where a lot of progress can can be made now. yeah and uh, we in Arnold try to establish this production method uh, at least internally uh, in the future. This means that all our designers need to change their mind. They need to think uh, in a different way. Otherwise, you will not get the benefit out of this new technology. And in the next step, as I showed, we also try to go outside of Arnold on the, on the market and bring this service uh, to companies which uh, may not take the decision to have an own machine. Thank you very much to both of you and all the tips and everything that was mentioned in the presentation. Um, and the whole webinar will be available uh, to watch again on 3D Natives. And uh, in the article, you will also be able to contact directly uh, 
the companies if you have uh, something specific you want to communicate to them but you will be able to watch uh, this webinar again i know that a few people asked so it's important to to mention uh so i would like to thank all of you for attending and also to thank our speakers again for participating thank you and uh, have a really lovely rest of the day Thank you. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.